Our scripture reading for this morning comes from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And he said to me, O mortal, stand upon your feet, that I may speak to you. As he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet, and I heard what was being spoken to me. He said to me, O mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, that nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They, as well as their fathers, have defied me to this very day, for the sons are brazen of face and stubborn of heart. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious breed, that they may know that there was a prophet among them. This is a word from the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For this I pray. Amen. Stubborn, brazen, impudent, rebellious. Thus says the Lord. You know, it's never a good sign when God begins a conversation in this way. I mean, actually, God goes on further in chapter 3 of Ezekiel, calling the people of Israel hard-headed and stubborn of heart. Now, we're not really used to hard language from God, especially when we are the object of those words. Now, I don't know about you, but I really do not like hearing God talk about humanity in this way. We prefer God giving grace and mercy, the softer and kinder language of a benevolent God. Hard words from the Lord have a certain way of cutting us right to the bone. These are hard truths about humanity. I mean, it's right there in Holy Scriptures. Ezekiel makes it very clear as to what he heard. God looks at the people of Israel and despairs. They forgot what it means to be God's people. They do not understand what it means to worship and fear the Lord. They do not listen. And so this is Ezekiel's call to go to a people that are dejected and dissatisfied, to remind them of the reason for this, their discouragement and, for the, and the bitterness of that failure to recognize God. This is a message that no one wants to hear. I mean, Ezekiel lived during the, in Babylon during the time of the exile. He visited a river of Babylon. By, by though, I mean, he, he was in Babylon and he was in exile. So he sought out a river, a place of calm to go and pray. He found, wants to find time to commune with God, to try and find the answers as to the reason they were exiled, to discover why God allowed all this to happen. So he drifts along, seeking answers to very difficult questions. The people Israel were a shattered people. They lost everything, their homes, their country, their temple, their way of life. And along the way, they lost their connection with God. Psalm 137 laments this separation from God. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows there we hung up our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked for mirth, 
saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How could we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? We see from Psalm 137 an attitude that is anything but worshipful among the people of God. They hung up their harps and other musical instrument in the trees. They refused to sing praise. The psalm continues telling of their bitterness. The people proclaim that they only wish for violence upon those who have wronged and abused them. So God calls Ezekiel to go and minister to these people, a lost and broken people, people who lament that loss, a people exiled by God because of their unfaithfulness, and a people that does not wish to hear God's grace and mercy. If any preacher had a tougher, tougher mission than Ezekiel, I don't know who. He did not seek out this call. He too was caught up in the exile, taken from his home, taken from his temple, and he thought, taken far, far away from his God. The Lord comes to Ezekiel in a powerful vision in which God's full glory is on display. Ezekiel writes in chapter 1 about his vision of God. Above the dome over their heads, was something like a throne, in appearance like sapphire. And seated above the likeness of a throne was something that seemed like a human form. Upward from what appeared like the loins, I saw something like gleaming amber, something that looked like fire enclosed all around. And downward from what looked like the loins, I saw something that looked like fire. And there was splendor all around, like the bow in a cloud on a rainy day. Such was the appearance of the splendor all around. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard the voice of someone speaking. There are not enough words available to us to describe God. The glory and radiance simply pour from this being. Power and majesty emanate from the Lord. Everything other than God is simply inconsequential. Yet the Lord stops before Ezekiel, a small and insignificant human being, and speaks. He said to me, O mortal, stand up to your feet that I may speak with you. And as he spoke, a spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet, and I heard what was being spoken to me. I mean, Ezekiel was prostrate. He was flat on his face in worship and humility because of the vision of God's glory. He feared God and dare not raise his head or look upon the brilliance of the Lord. But God's voice speaks to him. The Holy Spirit enters into him and makes him stand on his feet before the Lord. God prepares Ezekiel for action. Ezekiel believed in God devoutly. He worshipped and feared the Lord, and he went to the river to pray for deliverance, to pray for answers, to pray for something to alleviate his suffering. And God appreciated Ezekiel's prayer and humility, but he needed more from this prophet he anointed. I mean, prayer is a vital relationship for all of us with the Lord. Prayer is a necessary activity for us to know God. Prayer is where we prepare for action. The time comes when God calls us to leave prayer, and we must move forward to fulfill God's call on our lives. 
I mean, if the Apostle Paul had stayed in Jerusalem, then churches would never have been founded. Christ spent a great deal of time in prayer, but God called him to minister and then go to the cross. Prayer gave him the strength and power and calm. Jesus balanced prayer and action. And so God called Ezekiel out of prayer, anointed him a prophet, and called him to minister to a, to a troubled and troublesome people. I mean, God is very specific in his description of the people Israel. God holds nothing back, describing them as rebellious, stubborn, and obstinate. These people don't want to hear from God. They are mad at God. They blame God for their hurts and their ills. And they cannot fathom why God abandoned them to exile. And so they rage and rebel against the Lord their God, unwilling to look inside their own hearts for answers. Yet God still has compassion for this troublesome and wayward people. God says to Ezekiel, I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord. And whether they listen or not, for they are a rebellious breed, that they may know that there was a prophet among them. I mean, Ezekiel is not going to a receptive audience. They are not ready to change their ways. They will despise his words, curse him for daring to speak God's truth, and blame him and God for them, their circumstances, venting their anger on him, desperate for a target. Yet God sends Ezekiel to them for a reason. The call of God through the prophets implies that people can respond. They may be rebellious, but they are not without hope. God sends a message of hope with Ezekiel, that the people will hear and they will respond. This is a prophetic call for change. Do we choose to respond to God? Or do we ignore the words calling us to the Lord? It is a fair question for all of us, even to this very day. We live in a world in which God is doubted. Our lives are fragmented and broken, just like the exiles in Babylon. We hurt. We feel betrayed by God. We hear this message of comfort and hope, and we simply scoff. We don't want to hear it. We choose to ignore the prophetic word of God in our midst. Yet God continues to send us messages and messengers all the time. God understands our lostness and our brokenness. God feels our pain and our despair. But God also knows that we have to figure this out for ourselves. I mean, it would be so easy for God to just remove our pain, to fix us, to heal us, to mend us. But would we learn anything from that? Our journey is based on our actions and our reactions. When something is done for us, we might be grateful for it, but we miss out on the satisfaction of finding our own solution or piecing together that wonderful puzzle for ourselves. The same holds true for our relationship with God. We know God has abundant grace and mercy. We know God bestows it without question, but we need to be the ones to seek it out and to accept it. God knows this, 
So God tells Ezekiel that we are stubborn and rebellious, but God also sends us the hope we need, sending signs, with the signs we need to find our way back. I mean, the help is subtle. We need to listen for God's voice. It is a quiet buzzing in our heads, a faint voice of calm in the middle of a raging storm. It is subtle and almost imperceptible. But God speaks to us and points the way if we are willing to listen. God knows that it's not easy for us to return because God is absolutely correct. We are stubborn, headstrong, and impudent. But God also knows that we were made this way because each and every one of us is made in the image of God. So the Lord says to Ezekiel, And you, mortal, do not fear them, and do not fear their words. Though thistles and thorns press against you, and you sit upon scorpions, do not be afraid of their words, and do not be dismayed by them. Though they are a rebellious breed, but speak my word to them, whether they listen or not. My friends, I'm sorry to say it, or not really. We are a rebellious breed. We are a strong-willed people. But we are also a people that love the Lord our God. As we go about our lives, take a moment to quiet your thoughts. Tamp down your rebellious nature and listen for God or God's messengers. Ask, are you following God's path or the one you laid out for yourself? It's not easy to humble ourselves before the Lord, but when we do, God moves in our lives in new and unexpected ways. So, this 4th of July weekend, as we remember our freedoms, particularly the freedom to worship. Choose to listen for God, because you might just be surprised by what you hear when you take a moment to pause, quiet yourself, and listen. Amen.